This is the end of a long journey in which the sacred hoop has passed from hand to hand and walks step by step 10,000 miles across the continent. Seven generations ago, Black Elk, the great Aglala teacher and medicine man, had foretold a time when the balance and hope of his people would be restored. But after the near total destruction of their way of life, it would be a long road back. The assault was so great on our communities, by 1920, 99% of the native population had been wiped out. What we are here for is forgiveness. Sometimes it's hard to forgive when we have to forgive the unforgivable. The Wounded Knee Massacre in December of 1890 was a, a terrible event in which Chief Bigfoot and over 300 of his followers at that time, mainly women and children and elderly, were massacred by the U.S. 7th Cavalry. Black Elk was a survivor of that massacre and he stated that the, the sacred hoop of the Lakota people was broken that day. From then on, Native people saw more and more of their land taken away and their way of life condemned. In many cases, children were forcibly removed from their families and transported long distances to government-run boarding schools. In these institutions, they were forbidden to wear traditional clothes and punished for speaking their native language. Perhaps the greatest loss was the love and comfort of their parents. Many who suffered these traumas carried an emotional wound that has been passed down from generation to generation. If it's not diagnosed and if it's not treated, a lot of the uh, physical ailments that Native people have, like the chronic illnesses, whether it's addiction or diabetes, hypertension, could be traced to historical trauma. Not being able to resolve the historical trauma then creates even more problems to subsequent generations. For the Indian population here in the United States, we're actually the only population that is born with a legal right to health care. And what's unique about the tribes is that they exchanged land and natural resources for certain social services, including housing, education, and health care. When I have taken a look at what's happened to American Indians around the country, the health care system that was promised but never delivered, the treaties that America signed, the trust responsibility we have, it, it, it to me it is outrageous that we have shortchanged American Indians on health care that we promised them. There's a popular saying in Indian country, don't get sick past June. The Indian Health Service is full of hardworking, dedicated people, but it's severely underfunded by the federal government, so services and money often run out halfway through the year. If we look at the way my ancestors used to view the importance of community and the importance of the health of a community, I think that what we've seen in this country is lack of a community approach to our issues. My philosophy and, and approach to working with kids is sort of a sort of a vision in progress. A lot of it's based on talking with elders and getting their opinions and their advice about how to work, not only how to work with kids, but how not to. You can pass this to your children. Hopefully, there will be the best pride through that spirit, the best kindness and consideration to all people. No negative thoughts, no negative words, no conflict. What the grandpa was telling us about the spirit, because we all have that spirit, it's that, it's a fire in your heart. We call it spirit. You all have that. What we're trying to do with young people here in our program is to develop good habits at a, at a young age and just maintain a healthy lifestyle and good nutrition, learn how to make positive choices, 
develop all those resiliency skills that help you resist all that negative peer pressure and, and create a positive peer group instead of a negative one, which is what most of the kids are exposed to uh, in their schools and their home communities. You always have your right hand on this rope. You never let go. It's, it's helped me to appreciate my culture a whole lot more. I learned a lot about the medicine wheel and to appreciate Mother Earth and Father Sky. Don't forget to breathe. A lot of the adult staff would encourage us and like tell us, you know, you did a really, really good job. So a lot of that stuff meant a lot to me. We've had to endure a great deal of loss as American Indians. Loss of land, loss of language, loss of resources, loss of traditions, loss of medicine men and, and other healers. So we really need to focus on how we can heal culturally and heal spiritually. You see the top? The top's a little bit too long. Well, we need the best of modern medical perspectives, but we also need the best of traditional perspectives. The horn is too small from the picture, okay. and the head is going to be too big, so might as well be a sun buffalo. If we look at some of the traditional philosophies and some of the traditional approaches to how we should live our lives as human beings, there's a great deal of benefit for the rest of the nation and the rest of the world if they understand more of an approach of recognizing and respecting one another as human beings. Have that connectedness to that spirituality. Drinking is not something you would choose to do or suicide is not something you choose to do. It's a symptom of something else. It's the absence of our culture. One of the things that Black Elk did talk about was that it would take seven generations to heal that circle, to heal the sacred root. And right now we are in the seventh generation. 